Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. It is an honor and privilege to be here once again. And you are joining me, Maria Makao Mondi, for yet another episode of Testify. Now, today we are privileged and we are honored because uh, we are, we've gone international, if I could say that. Uh, we are hosting Sonia. She'll be telling us more about herself. She has been raised in Canada and now lives in the United States. And she's here to testify the goodness of God and so much things that God has done in her life and i believe god is going to minister to you through her story so thank you so much for joining us sonia thank you so much asante sana oh wow mm -hmm. and uh, what other kenyan words do you know swahili words swahili i'm learning things like uh, baraka kwako <laughs> <laughs> mungu wako ninde awesome yes. all right so a little bit about yourself you sonia who and uh, maybe how where how was your br coming uh, bringing up or uh, bringing rather Yes. So I grew up in Canada, mm -hmm. near Toronto, is a city that many people know, mm -hmm. uh, in a small town. Uh, it was uh, a family of many big family, and but nobody in my family knew God when I was growing up. Okay. So what happened was my mom, she would take us to church every now and again, and I would learn a bit about God here and there. Yeah. And then when I was 13, I moved to a small town, and there was this youth group that was very strong. Uh -huh. And I decided, well, there's nothing else going on on Friday. I want to see this youth group. And so that was such a blessing to me in my life. Uh -huh. I learned so much about God. And they. Um, it was a church that taught strongly about the Bible. Mm -hmm. And so I really was able to learn a lot, though I don't come from a Christian background. And uh, at what point maybe did you give your life to Christ? Was, was there a, a specific moment that you know it hit you yes. about who God was? I would say there's two moments that I remember so well. Mm -hmm. uh, I grew up without my father. My uh, mother and father separated when I was just a baby. All right. So when I can remember being six years old and we had just come from church and learned some about God. Mm -hmm. And I remember praying and asking, God, I so much wish my human father was here, mm -hmm. but he's not. At I would, what age are you at that Six. Time? I was oh, six. Wow. And so I was saying, God, please help me to know my father. But in the meantime, will you be my dad? Wow. And that was like coming to God really as a daughter and asking him, will you be my father? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure now looking back at God, he was like, of course, <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And so that was when I was six. Mm -hmm. And then as I was a teenager and was attending a youth group and, and such, I remember walking home from church one day mm -hmm. and I was singing my favorite hymn, Trust and Obey. Wow. And I remember sensing... The Holy, like, I didn't know what it was so much. I was like, what is this feeling? I'm just like feeling this like joy and peaceful presence. Uh -huh. And then I realized, oh, this is the Holy Spirit I'm feeling. Wow. And so that when I, I was about 16 at that time. So that is another point where I remember like walking with God and, and sensing his presence with me and working uh, in my life was uh, by age 16. And uh, maybe what was the reaction of your mother and your siblings, I'm thinking you have uh, sisters, yes. brothers. Yes, yeah. I have one brother. So maybe just uh, you telling them about God, the excitement and all that. Because you know when you, when you give your life to Christ for the first time, there's so much joy, there's so much excitement. How are they taking in the news? Uh, they thought maybe that it was strange in some ways. Like, So growing up in North America, Canada and the United States, there's a famous comedy show called Saturday Night Live. Mm. And there's a famous Canadian comedian on that show named Dana Carvey. And, and he had this skit, this show where he would be a church lady. And, and so they would joke and say, oh, you're like the church lady from TV, from Saturday Night Live. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And uh, so may, maybe at what point did you hear God give you a commission or mm. a call over your life Yes. in terms of purpose? So this is so interesting. So when I was 11, mm -hmm. I had not quite become, a, like I had invited God to be my father and I, I followed him as much as I knew. Uh, and then when I was 11, I just felt like from that time forward, mm -hmm. God had put a call on my heart, this passion for Africa. Oh. And I didn't know why or what he would do, but I was just so drawn to Africa. So when I was in school, 
Mm -hmm. I would, uh, if the teacher gave opportunity, like study a country about this or this, mm -hmm. I would always choose an African country. Wow. And I loved to study it and uh, even African music, when I would hear African music, it was like uh, excitement in my spirit. And uh, yeah, I just love African music and African drums. And so my God made my heart and my mind mm -hmm. tuned to Africa. Mm -hmm. So I had been wanting to come since I was 11. Mm. And I had a long wait. I did not get here for three decades. Oh. Three decades it took for me to get here. <laughs> so I'm so glad to be here. And I lived here last year for quite a while with my family. Mm -hmm. And this time I'm here for a month working in Kibara, mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, around Gigiri with different churches and ministries. And then God blessed me with an opportunity to serve at Alliance High School. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was great to meet the staff there, the students there, and, and God put a message on my heart to speak on leadership from a Christian perspective yeah. uh, because it's so easy to get a secular uh, version of success. Mm. And so God put a message of what does the Bible say about success? Wow. And that is what I shared with them. And it was great. Just that's such a strong high school. And I know leaders will come for Kenya out of that high school. Amen. Yeah, Amen. So. so you're talking about you receiving a call at almost 11 years yes. old. But yes. But then you had to wait for almost three decades to get to this place. Yes. Maybe let's talk about the waiting season because sometimes it can really be um, it can really bring impatience out of us mm. as believers. Like what yes. were you doing? as you waited for the opportunity? What yes. were you doing with your relationship with God? Yes, that is such a good question. So I'm an eager, passionate person, so it's hard for me to wait. Yeah. And I kept asking God, God, when can I go? When can I go? <laughs> and I remember this one day where I sensed God like answering me in prayer and saying, Sanya, I will let you know it's okay. <laughs> I'll tell you when it's time. Yeah. And uh, so in the meantime, I, I went to Bible college. I got strong training in Bible and theology and counseling. Was, um, and then also working cross-culturally because I knew God mm -hmm. was heading me towards Africa. Mm -hmm. And then I got a master's degree at Trinity Western University in counseling, mm -hmm. which also was about theology in the Bible because to me, mm -hmm. The way I can be the most effective is studying the scriptures and getting to know God and His ways and His plans. Mm -hmm. And so I went to a school that combined that with counseling and psychology. Ah. So it was integrated. Right. And I was very happy to get that education. And I began working as a counselor, working with children, adults, whole families. Mm -hmm. God has led me to do social work and community work. Yeah. Uh, and then I'm a professor for a university in Canada. Wow. So what I'm getting is also you are being equipped and yes. you're preparing for the moment. Yes. And so it makes sense why it looked like it took forever, <laughs> yes. right? Yes. Yeah, so that is just encouragement. So along the way, you did have an encounter. What happened? Yes. Well, you know, for me, because I, I thought actually I'd go into sciences and be a doctor. Mm -hmm. And so I ha God gave me a scientific mind. And so when I was presented with things of God, mm -hmm. I really had a question. Well, a verse that was so meaningful to me is mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, 13 and 14. Mm -hmm. And it says a promise from God that I love. Mm -hmm. It says, if you search for me with your whole heart, you will find mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And so that verse is very special and meaningful to me because I had to study, like, is God real? And so I would study history, archaeology, science, and just I would see evidence for God, proof for God. God is real. Mm. And He works. And then I began to experience God personally and see Him answer prayer. And so I really, after I took research as kind of a scientist mm -hmm. to study God, and then I'm like, I want to follow God. There's no other better decision mm -hmm. I could make in my life All right. than to follow God. And maybe what are some of the findings? Because probably someone is watching us this day and they're asking, is God real? Maybe just a little bit of what you found. Yes. Yeah. Well, in science study, we mm -hmm. learn different scientific laws. And what I discovered is that there must be a supernatural because the scientific laws are not really how the world operates. Mm -hmm. So there's laws of thermodynamics, there's laws of entropy that talk about how 
in nature, things go from order to disorder, that things tend to go from organized to disorganized. Mm -hmm. But that is not the way we see Earth developing. You know, yeah. it gets more complex and more beautiful. Yeah. And so I was like, that is one reason where there has to be a God, because mm -hmm. even the laws of science, it's the world does not go according to just natural law. Mm -hmm. The world operates according to spiritual law. Sure. So that was one of the things. Also, an interesting thing I found was that in history and in archaeology, mm -hmm. they would say certain things of the Bible. Oh, this is not true. The Bible is wrong. Yeah. But then over time, of course, the Bible is fully reliable, and they would find science or archaeology that proves it. So, for example, mm -hmm. the city of Nineveh, Nineveh mm -hmm. it used to be debated in, among scientists and researchers and historians, like, this has never existed. We have no evidence of Nineveh. Wow. The Bible is making a mistake. But then as time went on, mm -hmm. they discovered, the archaeologists dug and discovered the city of Nineveh. Oh. And so the Bible is like proven once again. Of, the Bible is true. Wow. The Bible is the word of God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> now something happened to you that's really sad. You yeah. were involved in an accident. You mm -hmm. know, just tell us a little bit about that. Season. Sure. Uh, six years ago, I was traveling on a road and uh, things can change in a flash, in an instant. And I was traveling and suddenly this driver who was speeding like two or three times faster than the speed limit, mm -hmm. he came driving so fast over this hill and he hit my car. And he totaled my car and his car. It was a very big accident. Mm -hmm. So there are many police and ambulances and they kept saying to me, we are so fortunate no one died in this accident because he was going so fast. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that the devil was trying to kill me that day, mm -hmm. that Satan wanted to take me out, but God protected me. Wow. And so, uh, but I still had a hard road. I still had, it's been six years now. Mm -hmm. And in that accident, my brain had been injured. So I had a traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. I had trouble doing everything. Talking was hard, speaking was hard. Mm -hmm. um, everything I had to just concentrate on so much. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but God has been healing me over six years. Mm -hmm. And so back then it was scary. Yeah. It took a lot of faith for me because as I've described, my work is so much like with intellect or brain, like teaching, oh. being a professor, counseling. Yeah. And I didn't know, like, am I ever going to get healed to the mm -hmm. point I can work again? So praise the Lord. Buona se fui we. Amen. Amen. Here God has are. healed me. Yeah. And so now I can teach again and I can be a professor and, mm -hmm. and do the ministries that God has called me to. Yeah. So it's been supernatural work. Often people, if they have a brain injury, they mm -hmm. maybe just improve for six months or one year. Mm -hmm. But even to this day, God is still healing me. Wow. And one of the ways I experience it in Kenya is that I love studying culture. Uh -huh. I love studying the tribes of Kenya. It's so rich in the languages. Mm -hmm. So while I was living here last year, studying uh -huh. the languages, God brought more memory back. God, God brought more um, health to my brain through that study. Mm -hmm. Wow. And uh, maybe what were you going through as in the recovery season? Mm -hmm. what, what, what you feel? Okay, you've talked about, of course, being a, a bit afraid. Yes. But what were you going through in terms of who God was and uh -huh. is in your life? You know, you're reminding me of an incident when I was a child. So when I was a teenager, um, one of my friends was pregnant and the baby died and it was so hard for me. And somebody came and they brought a Bible mm -hmm. and they set it on my lap. And I was thinking, you know, there are hard times in life where you can't just start reading the Bible. You have to have the Word of God in you. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those times when that baby died. It was so hard. And so similar when this accident happened, mm -hmm. then it was one of those times where I really relied on the truth of God. I had to rely on the things I'd been taught, the Bible study and I had done, the training as a disciple I'd had to get through that because it was so difficult. Mm -hmm. I was on bed rest from the doctors. The doctors were like, try to do nothing, try not to think, talk, anything. Mm -hmm. And so it was a time of, uh, I literally had to be in darkness for my brain to heal. And so I had to really focus on the principles of God, the truths of God, mm -hmm. to get me through that season because there was no clarity if I would get better or how much I would get better. Mm -hmm. And so I, the Word of God was really like my anchor, my foundation, yeah. and the promises of Scripture are what carried me through that season. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, on that, uh, on that point, I'd really want us to pause and maybe do a prayer because... When you're going through the storm, sometimes it's mm -hmm. easy to 
forget that mm. Jesus will actually save you from it. When you're going through uh, a situation, when you're in it, sometimes yeah. it's easier to encourage someone after you're out of it. Yes. You know, and maybe just say a prayer for someone that is going through maybe their trust in God to see them through a healing process, to see them through a provision process, yes. see them through something that is really difficult, a loss of a loved one perhaps. Maybe mm -hmm. just say a prayer for a, a two minutes or so, sure. maybe through the camera oh, there. Okay, sure. Thanks, Maria. Uh, let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, I pray for the people of Kenya, the people who are listening to this radio program. God, I pray that you would uh, bring hope where there is despair bring encouragement where there is doubt, that, and remind people, God, that uh, you do work through even the darkest situations, the hardest situations, and God, that your word is true. We can count on those promises that if we seek you with our whole heart, mm -hmm. we will find you, that you will work through everything that is good in our lives. Even the, the thing that is the most terrible and difficult, you can turn it for beauty and for good. And so we praise you, Father. Uh, bring hope to those who are hopeless. Bring encouragement to those in despair, that they would remember your promises, that they would turn to the Word of God and see how you are faithful, how have you, you have worked through the lives of the people in Scripture, and you will work through our lives. You are such a personal God. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being the God of hope. Thank you for uh, finding us in those times that are dark and shining your light and, and restoring us to joy. I praise Amen. you, God. Hallelujah, Father. Amen. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. We take a short break. We'll be coming back with more uh, on the story of Sonia. So stay with us here on Hope TV. Thank you for staying with us. This is Hope TV, where you look and live, testify edition with me, Maria Makaomundi. And we have Sonia today here. And uh, your story is really encouraging. Now, we have talked about the healing, and you've actually made a powerful prayer because people go through moments of healing, moments of storms, and sometimes it's hard to believe in the word of God. Yes. Now, I really want to know, when you're going through the healing process, did you have counseling? Because I know you do counseling. Yes, I, I do do counseling, mm -hmm. and during the time, I didn't go through counseling, professional counseling through that, but, but God works through the body of Christ too. Mm -hmm. And I know in Kenya, there's not enough counselors, and so a lot of times God will work through the body of Christ, and that's what He did for me too, through, mm -hmm. through friends, through mentors, through um, spiritual leaders in my life. Mm -hmm. He brought counsel that way. Okay, and people yeah. say counseling sometimes, or therapy. You yes. know, what's the difference, first of all, between yeah. therapy and counseling? Well, it's really the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that they are synonyms, that therapy sometimes are counselors who are trained more in a slightly different model of studying more of the past and different modalities and mm -hmm. helping you with the future. Mm -hmm. Counseling sometimes is more present-oriented, but it's really, it's the, the same synonym. thing. So mm -hmm. is it godly for people to go through counseling? Like, you know, sometimes, especially in Africa, there's the whole notion of, I'm going to pray about it and God is going to hear, so I don't yes. need to talk about it. I don't mm -hmm. need to tell someone about I don't need someone to walk me through it because uh -huh. I have God. Is yes. it godly for people to go for counseling? Uh, I'm glad you asked me that question. Mm -hmm. I have met so many Christians where they think that uh, if they go to counseling, it means they don't have faith. Yeah. If they see seek therapy, they're not trusting God or, or whatever. But I think that that's really a problem because God works through counseling so beautifully. Mm -hmm. I see in my work with clients where he will give me questions, he will give me information for a client to bless them. Mm -hmm. And I see God work through it. And the other thing, is that, um, well, I teach here in Kenya. One of the things that I do mm -hmm. is I will teach leaders of churches how to do counseling to help their congregation, to help the community. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I will teach them is how in the Bible, mm -hmm. there's so much psychology oh. that God doesn't hate it. He put it in the Word of God. Oh, okay. And so you can remember, Maria, reading the Psalms, people talking about anxiety and depression and, yeah. and loneliness. And, mm -hmm. and the Bible provides so much information on psychology in the scriptures. Wow. So when I study theology in the Bible, mm -hmm. I'm also studying psychology. <laughs> yeah, so, oh. yeah. So it's actually something that you would recommend. Yes. So how do you do it um, with, 
at the same time trust in God? How, how do you strike the balance? Ah. Well, I think that for me, as much as psychology can help us, mm -hmm. uh, really the Word of God is the most helpful. Mm -hmm. And the truths of God, the promises of Scripture are really the strongest foundation. So that is the authority for our life. Mm -hmm. Like 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 says that the Word of God prepares us for every good work. Mm -hmm. All the things we'll need to do in life comes from Scripture. Yeah. And so we can learn from psychology. We can learn from counseling. It can help us. There mm -hmm. are strategies that, to overcome anxiety which is so common, to yeah. come out of depression and difficulty. Mm -hmm. Psychology can help us with that. Uh, the psychology from the Bible mm -hmm. <laughs> and some other people that God has given wisdom to. So it helps us, but ultimately the most important is the Word of God. Okay, so Sonia, we're talking about emotional intelligence um, in line with the Word of God because so many times we, we know it from a worldly perspective, mm -hmm. but how is it in Scripture and how important is it? It's really such a fascinating study in the Word of God mm -hmm. and how God says in Genesis 1.26 that He makes us in His image and His likeness. Yeah. And so we, as you can study the Bible thinking about how is God emotional, how does it motivate Him, how does it guide Him in, in how He works with us. Mm -hmm. And so I have studied that in the scriptures and seen how, for example, mm -hmm. anger in the Word of God. Some people will be confused. Many Christians are confused and they think anger is a sin. I just can't be angry. Oh. But that's not true because in the Bible we'll see that God God gets angry mm -hmm. and he uses it in a righteous way to bring correction. Mm -hmm. Anger is something that we can do when there's injustice. Yeah. That God gave us the ability, I believe, to feel it because anger gives us energy, it gives us motivation to stand up against injustice yeah. and to fight ah, for what is right. All right. Yes, and so uh, the Bible says, in your anger, mm -hmm. be angry, but sin not. Okay. And so it's actually instruction, you know, mm -hmm. that God made us emotional like him. And, one of the things I see is, can you imagine if we were not emotional beings and then we could never feel conviction over sin or yeah. guilt over sin? That yeah. would be a very big problem. Okay. And so God has made us uh, emotional and he wants to work through all of them. So in my book, The Rest of Health, mm -hmm. I will talk about how some emotions are uh, reinforces like joy like happiness mm -hmm. God gives us those so we can keep following those things that bring the joy like worship time like yes. church like fellowship mm -hmm. you know and then there are other emotions that are uncomfortable and unpleasant mm -hmm. um, like grief or sadness and and those God uses to indicate change in our life to bring about change wow. for instance sadness mm -hmm. as I've studied it I've learned God has shown me how it teaches us if the God-given needs we have are not being met, yeah. then we will feel sad. Mm -hmm. And so that sadness causes us to slow down. I'm sure, Maria, you've had times where you're sad, yeah. where you're just slow and yeah. it makes you think. Yeah. And God works through that to show us, like, what need did mm -hmm. He give us that is mm -hmm. not being met, like being loved or fulfilling a calling or a purpose in our life. Mm -hmm. And so sadness, it shows us what change is needed. It indicates oh, to us I how see. to pray, how to go, so that uh, God's will can be fulfilled in our lives. Okay, and so how do you learn how to balance so that you're not... I don't know if it's it's bad to be too happy, extremely happy, so that you're not extremely angry, but at the same time you're still emotional or in tune with your emotions. Yes, yeah. that's a very good point because we need to be, the Bible says to be self-controlled, yes. right? Yes. And so um, to be self-controlled is to make sure that we're not just reactive and mm -hmm. going about in anger and being destructive, but to be led by the Spirit of God mm -hmm. and to follow His leading so yeah. that we are submitted to God, yeah. but also active in following out on these things mm -hmm. that God is leading us to do, to bring change, to bring healing, to bring hope. Mm -hmm. I work in uh, the community of Kibera a lot, and mm -hmm. it's such a special place. God loves Kibera and wants to do so much in Kibera. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in Kibera, there is a lot of despair, a lot of discouragement. Life is very hard there. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, God, as uh, you know, I just am thankful that the churches who work in Kibera they have the speakers playing their music yeah. and it brings hope it brings light it brings encouragement mm -hmm. and it can minister to people emotionally even if they're not attending at the church they yeah. get her in their homes yeah and so uh yeah the following our emotions seeing what 
God, do you want me to do about this emotion? Mm -hmm. But having it be spirit control. So. Okay. And you know, when you're talking about being emotionally intelligent, also there is a question of having a mindset. So uh -huh. the word of God says, set your mind on things above. Yes. So how do you make, how do you make sure that you're keeping a spiritual mindset at the same time being realistic? How, yes. how, how you strike the balance? Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the hardest things for me, at least that's one of the hardest things for me is it's so easy to just think in the natural, to see in the natural yeah. and, and to think according to the world. But God calls us to be in the world, not of the world. Yes. So for me, uh, trying to have a spiritual mindset of what are God's priorities in life mm -hmm. and always focusing on those um, of God comes first, you know, love mm. God and then love other people, mm -hmm. uh, the greatest commandments of scripture, and then comes work and then comes like relaxation or fun. But those are God's priorities for yeah. us yeah. and always trying to live by what's most important to God, mm -hmm. then our life will go the best if we have the priorities he does. Okay. And is it an easy thing to achieve or <laughs> <laughs> it's something we continually pray uh, towards? Yes, I would say so. God, help me to see with your eyes. Yeah. Help me to think like you think. Like mm -hmm. Romans 12 says, transform your mind, mm -hmm. that God will renew your mind to see with spiritual eyes and not mm -hmm. just what's in front of us. There's so much more than just this physical realm that we live in. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot happening. And, and I sometimes wish I were like Elisha or something where I, God would open my eyes and I could yeah. see in the heavenlies yeah. and I could see the angels or the demons fighting or what's yeah. happening in the yeah. spiritual realm. Yeah. But I try to keep it in mind and uh, and to help have the focus of uh, thinking eternally, mm -hmm. not just short term, long term, because yeah. the eternal realm, it's really about that long term or eternity. Wow. And uh, how many countries in Africa have you traveled to? Uh, so far, just two, three, sorry. Mm -hmm. I have been to Tanzania mm -hmm. and to um, the island of Zanzibar. All right. Yes. And and then, uh, and then I was also in Egypt oh. when my family was leaving Kenya last time. Right. We left through Egypt. And that was really exciting because a lot of scripture takes place in Egypt. Yeah. And sure. reading about Joseph and Moses and mm -hmm. the pharaohs. And, and so uh, one of the things that was really fun about being in Egypt, yeah. we we're in the area where Joseph was, where God worked through Joseph. Wow. And only in that part of Egypt mm -hmm. do you see green eyes. And it is because of the Hebrews coming through and how they were enslaved. And so as you go through Egypt, everybody mm -hmm. will have brown eyes. But then mm -hmm. in that area, you'll see green. And it's like a reminder of uh, the Hebrew people there and what God did in wow. Egypt at that time. So wow. it's fascinating history. Mm -hmm. And now I'm, I'm also I'm interested to know because your call is in Africa. Yes. Like what hope do you see? for Africa, mm -hmm. when you're talking to God in your private uh, room, in your closet, mm -hmm. prayer closet, and you keep coming back to Africa, yeah. you keep coming back to especially Kenya and yes. other countries. What hope do you see for Africa? And what does God tell you about this, this nation, also in Kenya, because we're just about to get into the election period? Yes. Mm -hmm. When I come to Kenya, I can see and sense and I experience God working so powerfully. Mm -hmm. His spirit is, is strong here and there has been much Christian teaching. There are quite a few churches as you go around. Mm -hmm. And in some ways I feel like Kenya spiritually uh, could go then and, and serve the missionary countries that used to come here. Mm -hmm. That the faith of the Kenyans, there's so many people that know about God and, and follow God and worship God, and, and Kenya could even send out missionaries. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that there is much spiritual knowledge in Kenya, much spiritual strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think that as people, I think it's going to come down to people following the leadership of God in their own life, mm -hmm. that we might fulfill the things on an individual level, person by person, yeah. fulfilling what God has for us. And that is how he'll work through Kenya. Mm -hmm. And that is how he'll bless his people. And so um, I see God work and I see him just work so powerfully when I'm in Kenya. He does different things through me that I don't see other places. Yeah. Like he will give me insight. He will give me words of encouragement. He will specifically tell me like when I was at Alliance High School, like this is the message for you, Sonia, speak this. Mm. So God is so alive and active in Kenya. And it's such a privilege and honor. It's humbling to be a part of. 
band. Oh. I'm so glad I get to be a part of it. All right. So maybe we'd want you to say a prayer to us and to the people viewing this program because there yeah. is currently a lot of hopelessness because oh. of how the economy looks like oh, and, uh, yes. you know, it's statistics indicating that, you know, the levels of poverty just rising day by day oh. in the country. It's, it's, it's a bad state for, not, for many Kenyans. So maybe yeah. just speak to us through prayer and speak to God and just encourage people through okay. the cover. Sure, I will be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, I know you have much love for the people of Kenya, for all of Africa. Mm. And God, I see you doing mighty work and, and raising up new leaders and training new leaders, and I get to meet them. And, and so, God, I pray that you would continue to build that remnant of Christianity, the Christians here, the believers that are shining light and truth. Work through each one individually, God. Every person who knows you is important, and you have good plans for every person. Mm. And so, God, help them to, to know your will, to obey, to fulfill it, that you might shine through them, each person. And God, I pray for uh, the leadership of Kenya, for the leaders around the country, mm -hmm. God, that you would give them eyes to see spiritually, mm -hmm. that they would not just see in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm, and that they would have your vision for Kenya, God, mm -hmm. that you would bring your will about here, mm -hmm. that people would be following you, loving you and loving one another, mm -hmm. and fulfilling your good plans for this country. Thank you, Lord. I, I just see you at work in wonderful ways. I praise you. I thank you. And may God's will be done in Kenya as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Sonia. Maybe your family. We didn't talk about your family. Are you um, married? Yes, yeah. I am married. I've been married for 24 years. Wow. Yes. And God has blessed us with two children. Mm -hmm. We didn't know for a while if we we're going to be able to have children. We were waiting and praying. Yeah. And God gave me a word of encouragement through another believer saying, you're going to have kids. It's coming. Wow. And so I had that hope. And so I have a 15-year-old son uh -huh. named Colton. Uh -huh. And uh he loves football, and he got to play football when he was here in Kenya. Oh, wow. And then I have a daughter, Lily, and yeah. she is 13, so now I have two teenagers. Yeah. And she loves sports of all kinds, and and uh, they had, they just loved being in Kenya and getting to meet all the Kenyan people. So hopefully they will be back with me soon. Yeah. Yeah, those two children. It's a motherhood is one of the biggest callings, one of the best callings in life. Sure. And I'm so glad for my children. All right. Thank you so much, Sonia, yeah. for making time for us. Maybe you could tell us. You could sign out Kwaheri in Swahili. Oh, yes. uh, you know, I know you've been learning Swahili. Yes, I have been learning Swahili. So I would say to you, Mungu Akulinde, uh, Baraka uh, Kwako, mm -hmm. and Kwaheri. All right. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, Sonia tells me that she was given a Kamba name. Yes. <laughs> her, name, her, name, her Kamba name is you, Mumbua. Mumbua. Yes. Yeah, it means rain. Yes, the blessing that God will bring through rain. And I love meeting people of different tribes in Kenya. And yeah. I love having a Kamba name. <laughs> and in, in Luya, I meet many Luyas too. And they will call me Nafula. Uh, the still summer. rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I hope. I hope I can bring God's blessing like the rains bring. Oh, amen to that. Thank you so much, our viewers, for staying with us. This has been Hope TV Testify with me, Maria Makao Omondi. Thank you for always looking and leaving. Till next time, God bless.